What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG Career Mode, it's episode number 11, happy new year guys, happy 2024, I hope you guys had a great new year's eve last night, I really enjoyed being on live stream with you guys, so thanks to everyone that tuned in, uh, but today we are back with the RTG Career Mode, I'm going to try my absolute best to get through to November, so play all those games in September, these in October and hopefully a few of these in November as well, we're going to be starting off with... Our first scouting updates of the season. And today, guys, well, what I do want to say too is, as it is New Year's Eve, I want to comment straight away from you guys today. And I want to know, what are your New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's resolutions? Okay, comment down below, what are your New Year's resolutions for 2024? I, I, I love hearing people's New Year's resolutions. I want to hear yours as well as Michael Clark. Ah! That's such a tease. I thought it was going to be amazing. I want your New Year's resolutions, guys. What are they? Leave them in the comment section down below. If you only just got the one, that's totally fine. What? Oh, Ryan Cook. Get in the kitchen. Looks fantastic. What are your New Year's resolutions? Happy to give you mine as we go for America for the uh, for the first time. Uh, well, I'll, actually, I'll give you one. Um, I, want to, I want to read 12 books this year. So one book every single month. Reading is... Uh, is one of my absolutely favourite pastimes alongside going to the gym. My, my favourite two things to do. You can tell I'm getting a little bit old. <laughs> no, I'm 31. My two favourite things to do. And uh, this year, I really want to read one book every single month. I'm that kind of, I'm that kind of person that, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll read consistently for weeks on end, and then I'll go like six to eight weeks without reading a single thing. But this year, I want to be, I want to be more consistent with it. So I want to read 12 books this year. So one book every single month, and possibly. Uh, a couple of the more, you know, sort of like more commonly read books as well, like The Great Gatsby, I want to read that, 1984, never read 1984, I believe that, but uh, but I want to read uh, some some quite common books like that, but those are, uh, those are that's a definitely a big news resolution in my mind, trying to, uh, to, uh, to, to read one book every single month. Okay, so I've seen some comments of this guy, by the way, Ander Mendoza, you guys saying, Doxy Boy, why have you got him at right back, man? He's clearly a wing, and I know, I do know that. It's just that I really like the idea of just being an Angel Rangel, being right back and left footed. But yeah, he, he does need to play third forward. He's he's wasted a full back. So that being the case, going to move him straight up to right wing. Uh, in this academy. Right, uh, so let's move into the first game of today's episode then, guys. Again, get those New Year's resolutions in the comments, but our first game today is Fulham, and my resolution for today's episode is to get our first Premier League win. Three games into the season, not a terrible start, no defeats, but no wins either, just three draws on the board today. We want our first win, and we're going to try and do what the Gunners couldn't, and beat Fulham here at the Swansea.com stadium. Come on, you Swans. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow, that is the worst possible start. So, we had two clean sheets in our first two games, and now it's two goals conceded in our last two. As Willian fires in the open away. Well, this is not a good start here. We have one more chance for the break. Jamie. Out wide to Ginnelly. Got Cam in the middle in a little bit of space. It will drop over his head, and oh! Dan James sliding at the far post, just couldn't make a connection. Half time, a goal down. This is this has not been a great start to the season. 45 minutes away from no wins in our first four and only one goal scored. I ain't called us the weakest side in the division for nothing. 4-4-2 in the final 10 minutes as our bring on Jay Fulton and, and Jerry Yates. Try and get Archer a little bit more support up top. See if we can find that level. Come on, James. Two Grimes. Come on, guys. Let me concentrate. Yes! And the subs do combine for the leveller. Jerry to Jay. Swans escape surely with a point. First appearance of the season for Jay in the league in what I believe is a contract year. And he's certainly given me something to think about. Not just in terms of tactics, because switching to 4 4 2 is how we got that leveller. But that's a massive point now. Four games in, no losses so far. Unbeaten start continues. Directly after the game, this is not what we wanted to see. Uh, Mendoza and Kinunen both want contracts. So Mendoza, of course, we're trying to convert to right wing, wants a deal. And as does the, uh, the brother of AK-47, who, to be fair, looks like a really talented goalkeeper. But I, I, I don't know what you guys are saying, but I tend to find 
really good goalkeepers very frequently in this year's FC. I'll, I'll give a pro deal regard because it is, of course, quite early days into the uh, into the save. And it hits one of our youth development objectives as well. So, yeah, no no losses in our first four games. We need some wins on the board, man. Seriously. So, after the international break, our following game, Wolves away at Molyneux as we face Gary O'Neill's side. Going for our first Premier League win of the season. Four draws to start the season off, man. I'm sure it won't be five in a row, but if that's the case, I want to make sure we win and don't lose. Gary O'Neill's Wolves away, following game. Give Bashir his uh, first Premier League game for us. AK-47 is going to start ahead of Patterson. He's so brilliantly there as well. And Ginnelly. Oh, yes! Okay, all right, okay. Look, it's, it's, it's four minutes in, all right, so let's keep it calm. When you strike early, you've got to remind yourself that Basically, no time has passed on the clock, which means that, okay, you, you begin the game with a one-goal advantage, but you can't allow that to make you complacent. Yeah, you have the lead straight away, but that's, that's, that's not going to count for that much if you don't concentrate directly afterwards, you know. Momentum is so important. If you concede directly afterwards, not only are you uh, back to square one, but you also have momentum against you, you know, so right on Kios, exactly what's happened, Wolves back on all turns, if you do get that early lead, just a little tip, is just make sure you concentrate for as much as possible, and try and get yourselves, I don't know, around to like the 30, 35 minute mark, because you'll know then, most of the first half's already gone, you still hold that advantage, but if you can see it early, not only is the lead gone, momentum's gone as well, come on in mate, and Dan, Skipper. <sighs> nice move, just couldn't finish it, man. I say that a lot in this year's FC, don't I? <laughs> talk about form being like ridiculously OP in career mode this is exactly what I mean five draws in a row to start the season off and three one ones consecutively as well bizarre start to the season I mean we're still undefeated but we still haven't won yet hey we all know streaks come to an end right like the Pistons ending their losing streak against the Raptors I believe will end our drawing streak against the Toffees following game Everton at home to go for our first Premier League win of the season come on Swansea it ends today all oh, the poweredness of form on full display to start this season off and it's why I often say, like, if you do lose a game, you've got to make sure you don't lose the next tour. Like, I, I know it sounds very obvious, but in CM with... Oh, pick from makes a save. Just how overpowered form is, man. You've got to make sure you bounce back ASAP. Pick for a comfortable save, I'd say. Still goalless is Cameron. Oh, he's denied. From point blank range. You know, we were talking about this on stream last night. It seemed like you guys agreed with me. Like, point blank headers in this year's FC. Goalkeepers seem to save the vast majority of them. The reactions from close range is absolutely incredible. Still 0 0. Good spell of pressure. As Dan James fires just off target. Unfortunately, no goals to show for it, though. Generally, AK gets a nice ball through to Cam. And now Arch uh, sorry, uh, Archer to Ginnelly. And Kanunen! Oh, just about squirms in! First of the season! First of the Premier League! It's a little lucky but we'll take it. Pinkford gets a touch but can't give it out. Swans in front! Just hits it with as much shot power as possible. And I was aiming for that corner. And it went in in the end. But only courtesy of a Pinkford touch. Thankfully, he couldn't push it towards the corner. It was straight at him. And in the end, well, Jordan Pickford often accused of having T-Rex arms. In this case, I hate to say it, but maybe it's right. Couldn't stretch it out even close to far enough to get a good hand on it. And in the end, it squirms into that bottom corner. And now... Swansea are tuning up. First win is coming in South Wales. Cam's first in South Wales. Swansea's first Premier League win on the books. 
Oh, it's taken six attempts, but finally, Swansea City have not only ended their drawing streak, but have their first Premier League win since 2018 to show for it as well. And fitting it comes in South Wales, courtesy of AK47 and our new man up top. Massive win against the Toffees. The run is finally over. I feel like Kay Cunningham. And directly after the game, the rifle says, Hey Gaffer, do you want to say thanks for giving me the chance to show what I can do? I feel like I'm ready for regular games now. I hope you'll be thinking about me in the match we've got coming up. And to be honest, dude, I, I have to say, in that game there, you know, getting the goal... Being the, uh, the supporting man for our two men on the flanks and, of course, Archer up top. I, I, I think now, we talked about AK and we said, should we loan him out this year or have him as a squad player? Well, actually, I think neither. I think now he should be starting, personally. Last year, Patterson won the assist title. But don't forget, AK had 11 in 14. I think, personally, whilst Patterson is seven ratings better, he's 15 years older and I think it's time to go with a young Finnish rival starting in the Premier League. It's going to take him a while to get really good, but yeah, I think he's earned a regular starting spot now. And speaking of youth players, as we convert Mendoza to winger, uh, we now got three more scouting updates and an academy update, so I'll get through this really quickly. Where I'm going to uh, continue scouting these, uh, these four Welsh kids here. And did I say kid? Because I meant 35-year-old barista. Uh, my goodness. Listen, I, I know. <laughs> 16. What 16 year old looks like that? As for America, uh, going to continue scouting on these four guys here. And unfortunately, Ivory Coast is a real dud this month. Not a single player even worth continuing to look at. So the academy right now looking like this. Tito's got the lowest, uh, sorry, Alvarez has the lowest potential range at 73 or 79. So I might just release him again. We're looking for the creme de la creme just because of how easy it is to find really great youth players. If a player's like sub 80 potential guaranteed, I think personally speaking, you, you can find so many better options very quickly. It's probably not worth continuing having them in the academy and taking up space. But uh, right now, Tatu Wallow still remains the best prospect we've got. Looking like uh, another Charlie Connick, a left-footed inside forward on the right. Right, following game, uh, Man City way at the Etihad Stadium. This is the second round of Carabao Cup. Heading to this game, he's going to field the back upside, and whatever happens, happens. Not too concerned about the game tonight. In my opinion, youth players need to be worked on heavily. I mean, we, we all know this, right? Like, the names, for example, so common. Uh, the surnames frequently used over and over again. Uh, you know, not not as many countries to scout as there should be. We all accept that one for sure. But in terms of appearances, yeah, sometimes it can make it quite comical. But it's like, it can break up the immersion a little bit when you see a 16-year-old looking like that. And it's like, bro, like, seriously. <laughs> when did you get puberty? Six? <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> easy, easy, easy. Oh, wow, what a goal. What a goal. I thought I jockeyed almost perfectly, but I, oh my, I want to see it on the replay. That's incredible placement. So it's the weaker right foot from Haaland, but I don't think you can call that weak because that is just, when you talk about top bins, goodness gracious, you could have two Loris Garius and a Carl Rushworth in cold hair. None of them are getting near that. That's an incredible strike. And that is why he's one of the highest rated players in the game. That's unbelievable. Second half underway, a goal down at the Etihad. It's, oh, what a save, Carrie. It's unlikely we'll come back from this. So, look, we're still in it. We still give ourselves a chance. I always said that, like a one goal lead. It's never really enough because you just know one slip up, one screamer, one moment of madness, whatever it may be, and your lead is gone. So, for now, Carrie has done well to keep us in this contest. You just never know, man. We might, we might get lucky. We might get lucky. Jamie! Right on cue. That's what that one goal lead, man. You can't let it rest on those laurels. Carriers keeps us in the tie. Jamie levels it. Last chance for Manchester City. Ball works into the middle. Greenish control. Shoots. And, oh! Puts it just, just wide. And that means we are going to the lottery of the spot kicks. Now, we won the Challenger Playoff final on Pens last year. Oh! Could actually want it there as well. And we still could, actually. Oh, ref! Well, he's well within his rights to blow there. Spot kicks it is. Spot kicks to the Etihad. A third of the save already. So far, played two, won one, lost one. And let's see how we get on. 
against Manchester City in their backyard. Come on, Swansea. So here we go. First man up is Rodrigo, and he sends Carrius the wrong way. Uh, it's Man City take the early advantage. So I brought the Ukrainian off the bench in the final stages. He will take our first. I'm going top left as well, and he also scores. Erling Haaland save Carrius with the save to keep us still tied and give Liam the chance to give us the lead. Which he doesn't. Can't blow opportunities like that. Man City back in front for Sergi Gomez. He's going to go to that corner again though with Jamal. I think Zach is going to uh, change his corner. And he didn't, but Jamal still drills it in. Phil Foden, next man up. He also scores. And that means now... Oh no, it's the next one afterwards. Jamie Patterson must score though, really, let's be honest here. Otherwise, we are on the brink. It's Jamie who scored our leveller and scores from the spot kicks. Matias Nunez. Denied by Carrius. Second save in five. And that means that Marchetti can send us through to the following round. The Frenchman brought in on a three. Put Swansea into the following round. The Swans come to the Etihad and keep their Carabao Cup run going. Marchetti. Man, I like this guy, honestly. He was probably the man of the match in the last round against Palace. And now he's just netted the winning penalty away at the Etihad. I'm liking him a lot, man. So I think we see the draw directly afterwards as well. And in the following round of the Carabao Cup, with Swansea's run continues... We've got Wolves away at Molyneux, who, of course, we just faced and drew against. Gary O'Neill's side in the last 16. I've got, I've got to say here, I would like a good cup run this year. Why not here in the League Cup? Excellent start already, knocking out two Premier League sides. Right, next up, Burnley away at Turf Moor as we're going to stay undefeated in all competitions to start the season off. Come on, you Swans. Okay, all right. Swansea's starting to click a little bit now. Question is, how long can we keep it going? Brown, oh, you just knew it. You just knew it. His first goal for the club. Who does he come against? The team has just released him. Josh fires in the opener at Turf Moor and, of course, shows the respect as well. Kanunen hits it long, flicked down by Cam, and Josh gives us the lead away at Turf Moor. That was obvious. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> first time Burnley have been inside. Finish from close range. Claret's back on level 10. That's poor defending from me, that. Just let him walk straight through. And a simple shot beats Carl. Okay, back on level terms. <laughs> We've been in this position many times before. And there's still a long way to go. No reason we can't restore the lead. 17 on the clock. Burnley looking for that leveller. Luca Warwick. Oh, wonderful little touch to beat Ethan Laird. And oh, wonderful. What a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant assist, man. I mean. Sometimes you just got to say, fair play, you've just done me in. That's an amazing assist. I don't think Ethan Laird is going to be sleeping too soundly tonight because Luca Warwick is going to give him some nightmares with that sort of dribbling. And there it is, our first loss season. It was going to come at some point, just like we knew the drawing run was going to come to an end and we'd get our first win. We were also going to get our first loss not before long as well. The foot will come in the week against Man City. In the end, it comes away against Burnley in the league. Right, let's move straight on and bounce straight back. Next up, back home, West Ham at the Swansea.com Stadium. Seven games in, only one win on the board so far. Let's get our second here. Timing through the gap. And James just about keeps it in play. And does brilliantly there. That is fantastic from Dan James, isn't it? And he's found Cameron Archer, and it should be... Our first of the game, and it is drilled in by Cam for his third of the year and his first at home as well. Swansea have the lead. It's the man with the bow and arrow striking first. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, good finish that. No chance for Carl. Four minutes to go for the break. It's going to be another game without a clean sheet. None in our last three now. And after our great start defensively, now, now we're starting to struggle a little bit. These are Premier League attacks, man. You've got to be really on your game for 90 plus minutes to ensure you can see out clean sheets. But the good news is we're getting more chances. Oh, wonderful block there as Cal was arriving and West Ham would escape. Yeah, things have flipped since the opening couple of games, man. Now we're not keeping as many clean sheets. We're certainly looking a lot better on the offensive. This is now our, uh, our eighth game in a row with a goal, which is uh, quite nice considering how we started off. 
but we're going to need another one if we are to return to winning ways here. Kanunen's done really well there. And that's a fantastic ball to find Archer. Now, can he get away and shoot? He can indeed. Oh! Clips the outside of the post and drops behind for a goal kick. I can see someone winning this, man. Definitely could be us as well. Oh, my goodness. We are going to have yet another draw in less. Dan. Archer. Cullen. Ginnelly for the win. Oh, clips the post. Second time in the game with the woodwork. And it drops behind for what would have been a goal kick. Another draw for the Swans, man. We're not losing a lot. But we just can't buy Premier League wins, man. They continue to elude us. Well, I say this every now and then. Life can sometimes be all about perspective. Are you glass half full or glass half empty? Because eight games in, yes, we've only won one. But we've only lost one as well. And we're in the top ten. You offer that to me come the end of the season. You know I'll take it. Following game, though, we'll be doing well to avoid defeat in this one. Newcastle away at St. James's Park. Come on, you swans. To be fair, life might be all about perspective. But if this becomes one win in nine... <laughs> I mean, no matter how you want to look at it, no matter how much of an optimist you are, you're not going to be too keen on that sort of record. But uh, even so. One thing you might notice is that uh, the, the lineups for this year, like the Premier League teams are rotating a lot. Not not fully, but quite a lot of rotation. We talked about this on stream last night. Since the patch, that has been a bit of an issue. And we had this a few years ago in, in FIFA, where it was quite common for those who didn't play back then. And it seems as though he has done the same thing again. Since the recent patch, there's been a lot more rotation. But every now and then, it gives a chance for a fringe player to perform and show they should be starting more. Stand up, Mr. Turner Cook. He's just got the opening goal and Newcastle in front. This is, this is a bit worrying for us here. No, Anthony Gordon going all the way to 2 0. Former Toffee doubles the lead and the Magpies. Maybe they are injury hit, just like in real life, based on the amount of rotation. But already 2-0 down in the North East, and this is not looking good. And one win in nine is looking like the record we'll have come the conclusion of this contest here. Yes, we knew, we knew this was going to be a tough first season, but maybe I underestimated just how tough it was going to be. God damn, off you go, off you go, off you go. Canina says, I'll have that. Plays him through. Dan James gets away. Must finish. No, Tino robs him. Just he was about to shoot. That's, oh, what a ball. What a ball. And Joe, Joe, Joe's, Joe's not the quickest center arse. He's not catching on there. I'm in trouble there. It's going to be free. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is going to be our worst defeat of the season thus far. And like I said, it doesn't matter how big of an optimist you are. One win in nine and, and this demolition away in the North East. That's... That's not good for any team. Come on, Jamal. Off you go. Off you go. Back in the team for this one here. He's done brilliantly there. Jamal. Kanunum. Okay, all right. Well, Alexi gets his second of the season. It's it's. Can you can you pick the ball up for me, please, mate? Can you can you pick the ball up? No, he can't. But he's got us a goal. Still, it was still plenty of time. Plenty of time. And in the end, it proved to be nothing other than the consolation. That glimmer of hope doesn't materialise into anything more substantial. It's like me getting a match on a dating app. 3-1 the final score, our second loss of the season, and our poor record to start of the season continues. One win in nine. Optimist or not, that is grim reading. We'll do a couple more to end today's episode off, because I do predict us winning the following game. That's at home to Bournemouth. But before we get there, we've got three more scouting updates and, of course, an academy update as well. So that's an interesting offer, but still no. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we've got from our monthly scouting this time. Where for the barista, he still does look pretty solid, to be fair. Six foot four, possibly could be a centre-half, you know. Do you know what I might do? I might give him a scholarship and see if he's playing CM or LB. Because if he is, convert him to CB and that overall will definitely jump up. And for America, just going to continue to scout in on Russell Brown and Tyler Johnson. The overalls aren't the highest, but the potential does seem pretty decent. So for now, just continue scouting. From Ivory Coast, we finally got three really solid youngsters here, particularly this guy, Bubakar Bangura. Looks absolutely brilliant. Two mil valuation. He's going right in our academy. And he does have the highest overall in the academy as well. He looks really solid. I'd say with a lack of pace, 
I could see him more being a CAM, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on him for now at 64 overall. But unfortunately, that, uh, that lad with the massive full beard is indeed a centre-half. That's a shame, because if he was at LB or CM, a position change would see a big overall spike. Potential's okay, but the, uh, the starting overall is just so low. It's going to take a long time for this guy to get even close to being first team ready. Right, uh, let's do a couple more then, and let's jump into the following game, which will be our final league game today, because I want to end on that Carabao Cup last 16 clash away against Wolves. Bournemouth at home, going for just our second win of the season. And yes, only two losses, but only one win on the board. We don't want draws, man. We want victories. Find a, a penultimate game, Bournemouth at home. How good has Andoni been for Bournemouth, by the way? Honestly, it's been good to see it as well, man. Like, honestly, I mean, sacking Gary O'Neill, that was a harsh thing to do. But, you know, many people have mentioned this. The, uh, the ownership thinking bigger. You know, perhaps wanting to turn themselves into a bit of a bright. And I can understand the ambition there. Don't get me wrong. But for Gary O'Neill, my manager of the year last year, it was harsh. But look what's happened to him. You know, he's taken over at Wolves and it's a match made in heaven. Wolves fans are loving him there in Molyneux, man. I'm pleased to see it. So, oh, as a heart G hits the bar. It's one of those moments where everyone wins. Both clubs are doing well. Both managers are doing well. One of those really nice football moments where nobody loses, everyone wins. Oh, Clive gets away from Harry Darling and drills it in. And Bournemouth have the lead right before the break okay now now i'm starting to worry a little bit yes only two losses in nine for a newly promoted side that's not terrible but what this is going to be one win in 10 games to start the season off yeah i don't i don't care how much of an optimist you are man the glass is not half full it's barely been poured that's ironic how we started the season off with back-to-back -back clean sheets and i was like oh yeah defensively we're going to be fine we're going to be fine well since then we haven't had a clean sheet it's not looking good as cameron archer well, that is the bright spot so far this season. Continues his fantastic start since coming in. Fourth for the year in the league. Archer fires in the leveller. Right, come on, let's turn this game on its head and win this man. There's, oh, that's, that's late on time in there. From DCL. Is that not even going to be a booking? As Browning wins, it's getting, a bit, it's getting a bit chippy now. Getting a bit chippy here between two teams off the poor starts this season. Now, that is not what I meant to do. That's an amazing ball, which we want a corner out of as well through the ex-Toffee. 20 minutes to go. We can win this here. Dan James with the corner. Whips one in. Cameron Archer gets up. Gin Lee keeps it in play. Rodden. Kanoonan! Anton Kanoonan's third of the year. A little scrappy ball take it. Swansea in front. This is why I am a firm believer in mid-season upgrades, man. AK-47 with three Premier League goals already. And he's chipped in with an assist as well. As the Swans come from behind to win. And this might be the dagger. It's Dan James to wrap it up. Swansea City's second win of the season. Both coming in South Wales. And it's the Academy Grand. Dan James who wraps it limbs at the Swansea.com stadium. Limbs in South Wales. Second win of the season. And it is a massive one. Swansea 3. Bournemouth 1. And a huge win over Andoni's side. Come on! And actually, I'm going to save that Wolves game for the following episode. Because I don't want to end on a loss. I want to end on a big win. And that is just what we've seen. So we'll leave it there for today's episode of the RTG Karuma, guys. So massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And again, keep it in perspective, guys. Yes, only two wins start the season off. We're top 10 on the back of that big win against Bournemouth. Have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic start to the new year. And I'll see you for the next episode of the RTG career featuring that last 16 clash away against Wolves in the Carabao Cup and more big games in the Premier League as well very soon. Come on Swansea, what a win!